So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are. We have reached the final stage of the 18th edition of the ICC mediation competition. I am delighted to see you all here for this final round and for the award ceremony. Welcome, everybody. So this year's finalists are Nassar University of Law, and New York Law School. They will join us in a moment. They will be competing on problem number five, the cultural exhibition, prepared by Christopher Myers, who will, who will be um, missed deeply and will always stay in our memories. The final session will be mediated by Alan Limbury <laughs> and judged by five judges. Raffaella Pileri, <laughs> Damien Coté, Natasha Tunko, <laughs> Tatlim, <laughs> and Gary Weber. <laughs> the mediation session supervisor is Anna Maria Zwinhoff. <laughs> now, let's get started. Good luck, teams. Good morning also on my behalf and extremely good morning for the competing teams. It's great to hear and see so many faces in the audience early morning, and I hope the teams have got some sleep as well. Um, so Nalsar University of Law will be playing the role of requesting party, uh, and they are playing the role of National Tourist Board. And uh, New York Law School, being the responding party, will play the role of speed exhibit, so the contractor today. Uh, before going ahead with the mediation, I just wanted to uh, remind you of a few practicalities. Because it's a final, there will be no scoring of the mediation plans, so we will directly proceed to the actual mediation. And also, I would like to ensure that all of you in the audience have switched off your phones, uh, because we like to ensure that the teams can uh, enjoy the session without any, any distractions. So please make sure that you have switched the, them off, at least now. Thank you. And I understand there may, um, they, we will be receiving the confidential information distributed at, uh, in the audience also in, in a minute. I will be showing the already familiar uh, 10 and 5 minute signs uh, when there is 5 and 10 minutes left or remaining of the session. And in case caucus or breaks are being called, I will accompany the team members uh, this way uh, to, to um, spend the time. So, the time in my clock is now 17 past 9. The mediation will run for 85 minutes. And I invite the teams and mediator when you feel ready to initiate the session. And wish you best of luck for the finals. Thank you. Thank you. Is this microphone working? No. Should we try ours? Thank you. Thanks for being my 
time. And before we start, I would like to acknowledge and pay tribute to Christopher Myers, with whom I worked for many years as co-chair of the Problem Drafting Committee, and we're all going to miss him terribly. Welcome, everybody. My name's Alan Limbury. I'm the mediator today. Please call me Alan, and perhaps we should introduce ourselves from the room. Hi, I'm Mehreen Mandir, and I am the chairman of the National Tourist Board for Erigoron. Good morning, everyone. My name is Swati Reshmita, but please feel free to call me Swati. I will be the counsel for National Tourist Board of Erigoron today. Nice to meet you all. Good morning. My name is Natalie, and I am the manager of Speed Exhibit. Good morning. I am Austin, and I am counsel for Natalie and Speed Exhibit. Thank you. Well, now, um, let me briefly um, explain the process. My role as mediator, unlike that of a judge or an arbitrator, is to try to help you reach your own voluntary agreement. So I'm not here to impose a solution. I'm not here to give legal or other advice. You have your own lawyers to do that, but rather to see whether the interests of both sides can be met by an agreement. It's as confidential as the law will allow. And what that means is that, with very few exceptions, evidence cannot be given in court of what happens here. So it's designed to encourage you to put your cards on the table, speak frankly and freely to see whether you can sort things out. And there are one or two exceptions. For example, in my jurisdiction, a person who becomes aware of a serious crime and doesn't report it can themselves go to jail. So I strongly recommend that nobody confesses to any crimes. <laughs> um, now what I suggest is that we hear first from the requesting party how you see things. Then any questions you may have, just to be sure you've understood what's been said, that we then hear from you, the responding party, how you see things, and likewise, any questions just to be sure you've understood. And then because we have only 85 minutes, my recommendation would be that instead of spending time um, articulating and um, devising an agenda and then going through item by item, we simply fast forward to what the party's interests are that need to be met and then brainstorm some possible options for solution without evaluating. Uh, I'm entirely at your disposition if you'd rather have an agenda, but that's what I suggest we do. So unless you've got any questions about the process, I think we can proceed. There are no questions from my side. Natalie? Yep, no questions for us either. There is one thing I forgot, and that is to explain what this is. <laughs> um, this is a miniature Aboriginal speaking stick from the Bunjarup community in Australia. It's been beautifully decorated. Uh, I'll pass it to you and the others so you can Thank you. admire it. When that community holds its meetings, they have a rule that says you're allowed to speak only if you're holding the speaking stick. And the full size one is about a meter long. So you can imagine it's a very useful tool to enforce that rule. <laughs> I'm, not, uh, I'm not suggesting that you actually have to hold the stick before you speak, but rather, if there are interruptions, all I need to do is wiggle the stick, and you know what I mean, and then we can proceed. So um, let's now hear, first of all, from the requesting party. Thank you so much, Alan. I feel so confident in your presence here that we will be able to have a collaborative discussion. So first of all, I am a public servant. As I told you, I am the chairman of the National Tourist Board, which is, of course, a part of the Tourism and Culture Ministry at Irigaron. That must explain my position to you because I am answerable to my government, but more importantly, I'm answerable to the public. I work with public money. I work to pursue their interests and their aspirations. And for me, everything I do today and in life comes from that concern mainly. 
Moving on to why we're here today, I want to remind you of the intention and the purpose of the contract that we entered with you. For us, the ICE exhibition was a chance to showcase the culture, the aspirations, and what Irigaron stands for. For me, and for the people of Irigaron, there are a few things, and there are a few things we're really known for around the world, and that is our green building methods and our environmentally friendly architecture. So when we appointed you and we entered into that contract with you, our aim was to make sure that this image of ours is portrayed so that we can get in investments and trade and we can build relationships around the world and have the best opportunities come in for the people of Erigoron. Which is why when we entered into the contract, we mentioned the iconic standard, which really signifies the standard to which Erigoron commits itself with every little thing we do, and which is why we incorporated it in the contract as well. Now, within the contract itself, we did give you a significant amount of autonomy to come up with your design, subject to, of course, approvals where required, because at the end of the day, you are a part of Covera. You, you're based out of Covera, and we are based out of Rigoron, so we would like to have the final say, but we intended to give you as much autonomy as possible. You just had to run the uh, designs through us to meet the standards, and you knew that while entering the contract. It's not something we sprung upon you later. However, now we're in front of a situation where two things have happened. Firstly, of course, unfortunately, the pandemic, which <coughs> devastated many, many lives, and unfortunately, our contract was one of those. And the second thing was, according to you, our instructions were pushing up your prices. It seems to me that the two of us have not really understood the contract in quite the, sen in quite the same sense. Insofar as the delay is concerned, I know that the contract does not provide for it, but isn't that why we're here, Natalie, to discuss what we can do now, now that the contract seems to be inadequate? But the more important thing for me is that the ICE exhibition is happening not in 2022, but in 2023, and it still holds the same value for us. And I do want that the changes and the specifications to the design that have been made, they must be carried out and in a timely fashion. And on these factors, I feel like we can have a very collaborative discussion today. Rest assured, I'm here to hear your concerns about why this contract can, cannot be carried forward or should be carried forward in a certain manner. And I'm here to make sure that our relationship and this contract can fruitfully be seen through. And I think I'll hand it over to my counsel right now to get into the nitty gritties of the legalities here. Sure, Mahin. Thank you so much for that. First off, I would like to extend my thanks to Natalie and Austin here for accepting our invite and also to you, Alan, for agreeing to mediate this session. I know it's 9 a.m. on a cold Parisian morning, and it's difficult for us to all assemble here, and yet we are here. Now, as you know, I am the counsel for NTB today. My role here is advisory in nature. I will primarily be assisting Mehreen in today's mediation, and I will be advocating my client NTB's interest at this table. Austin, I'm sure you'd agree. In law, we speak of a lot of things in terms of black and white. But the way I see mediation, Alan, is that it helps us transcend beyond the binary of black and white and to actually delve into the heart of the matter. So when my client approached me about this issue, I advised to take the mediation route because I strongly feel that what can be resolved through discussions need not go into protracted litigation. And that's why we're here today to 
put forth our interests and also hear you on your concerns. Now, Mehreen has very eloquently put forth what our concerns here are, but I will briefly, for everyone's benefit, sum up what our interests are today. First, our primary interest is that the showcase be completed in a timely manner, ready for it to be displayed at the ICE 2022, which is now to be held in 2023. Second, is about the design itself, that it reflects the distinctive cultural values and vision of Erigoron, and the changes be incorporated into the final design. Third, but definitely not the least, while my client has agreed or is ready to address financial implications of this mediation pertaining to the design, it is also extremely important for my client for you to acknowledge that the nature of the wherewithal that we are talking about today, it's public money. So at the end of the day, my client is answerable for every penny that she's spending here. Alan, I know you've said that it's uh, instead of setting an agenda, we could just briefly talk about the interest and delve right into it. And I think Mehreen and I are completely on board with it. So to briefly speak about what our interests are today in just one word each, it would be time, design, and money. Now, Natalie and Austin, we've given you our perspective and the floor is yours to give yours. Thank you. Well, first of all, do you have any questions just to be clear You've understood what's being said before we hear how you see things. I think we're good. Thank you. thank you, Mr. Mediator, and thank you both for your remarks. As I said, my name is Natalie, and I am speaking for the Board of Directors of Speed Exhibit today. We are a contractor company with experience building, designing, constructing, operating, and then demolishing the showcase buildings that you have discussed today. The contract that we entered into for 12 million euros was very exciting for my organization. We were excited to work with the National Tourist Board, especially in this post-COVID era where we are able to have these events again after not having them for a couple of years. And although the event did have to be pushed off, we are excited for this conversation today so that we can determine a way forward in order to be able to build that showcase for you for the 2023. So I'm very happy to hear that we have that shared interest right from the beginning. The contract that we entered into did provide some specifics regarding the size and some specificity as to the design. However, the primary design was left up to my company as well as the construction, which is very standard. As with our previous buildings, it was our understanding that the goal is to produce a structure that is safely constructed, that it is done in time for the event and for you to have time to prepare for the event, and that it does our best to meet your interests. I want to be really clear that we do want to continue working with you today, and we want to build the structure that you are hoping to have. And I really want to help increase your number of visitors into your showcase and meet your vision. But I do also need to be clear that there have been some barriers out of our control. These barriers include the lack of access to materials across the globe, the limit of our ability to have our labor force all intact together due to necessary safety procedures where our employees had to be separate, as well as the delays from the event. All of these barriers unfortunately come with a monetary aspect. It costs more money when there are less materials and when you have to work with your labor in different ways. And I really do want to echo that I understand you are utilizing public funds and I really appreciate your public commitment and your commitment to your country. I also hope that you can reciprocate that respect that I am advocating for my employees, for my board members, and for everyone who relies on our organization. 
And I really hope today that we can have our priorities align and that we can figure out the monetary compensation. I do just really want you to know that we cannot continue building without the 500,000 euros that you're currently withholding due to the cash flow problem. So any deal we discussed today, unfortunately, would not be able to move forward because we simply wouldn't be able to continue building without those funds. I hear your interests and I really do believe that discussing finishing the showcase in a timely manner, the design itself, as well as the monetary aspects seems like it will align great. And so I'm looking forward to a very fruitful conversation today where we can maintain our relationship and I will now pass it over to my counsel, Austin. Thank you, Natalie, for explaining your situation and thank you, Alan, for your assistance. And thank you for requesting this mediation. I believe it was a great idea and I truly believe that we can find a solution and as you said, collaborate and carry it forward. With that being said, as counsel, I'm here to support specifically more on the contractual and the legal issues. However, before coming here, I highly advised one thing to my client that I want to share with the three of you. I highly advised a business solution to complete the original goal. It is far more desirable than the lengthy and expensive litigation that can ensue from such a grand project. Council, I heard you, and I agree that we can work this out here. And my client is ready to work with you and move forward. Touching on the legal claims, I want to briefly touch on this iconic standard. We have the utmost respect for the iconic standard that you want your country to be represented by. However, in the legal world, that is extremely difficult. It is inherently subjective. We agree that it is very high, but we also agree that we can meet such standards. That standard contractually would be very difficult to figure out if it is met or not. So I'd rather not take that route. Regarding the delay and the COVID, this is a turnkey contract for 12 million euros. With that being said, we are certain that you can have a completed project ready for the event. The last legal concept that I want to touch on is the year delay and that impact that that delay has caused my client. My client is still committed to completing this project. It is a year of extra work, increased cost, and that being said, if it were to go a litigation or another route you know, we would be able to seek increased amounts for that extra year that she willingly decided to just put in, put in the extra work, all of that time. However, it is imperative for the 500,000 that is withheld for the cash flow that is going to solve our shared interest today. The extra cost of the 1 million, not important right now but the cash flow is what is, and that is what will help reach your goal and allow my client to help reach your goal. As we have all said, we are here to collaborate. We wanna to work together and remedy this situation. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, do you have any questions just to be sure you've understood what's been said? I think we have. We've understood perfectly, okay. thank you. So would I be right in saying that um, both sides have a common interest in seeing completion of this in time for the 2023 exhibition? That would be correct, yes. And that it be an iconic design, whether or not changes need to be made, and that there be sufficient funding to enable all of that to happen within that time frame. Correct. Yes. Are there other interests that need to be met? I think it checks all of our boxes, Mehdi. Yes, I think it does. Natalie? Yeah, I think just adding to that, just having a discussion as to how we can make sure our working relationship going forward is able to remain amendable and that we can continue working together. 
I think uh, we're in agreement here, and this is a shared interest, that we would like to continue working with you, uh, at least in principle, such that we get the assurances that you know the work will be carried out the way we want to. So yeah, I think we have a mutual interest there. Great. Would you like that written down, or are you happy to proceed on the basis of... I think we can proceed. Yeah. yeah. I think we can proceed. Okay, let me do that. See if I can do it legibly. Yes, thank you. Perfect. What I suggest is now that we've identified those common interests, that we have some time to brainstorm um, possible options. And there are some rules of brainstorming. I'm sure you're aware of them. The first one is nobody's to be taken to be making an offer or a proposal while we're brainstorming. The second one is there should be no evaluation, either in praise or criticism, of any ideas. Um, I can just put them up. You can decide later whether any of them are worthy of being put forward as an offer. Mm. And the reason for that is if I come up with an idea and somebody snorts in derision, as they usually do when it's my <laughs> idea, Somebody else who might have been about to suggest something thinks, well, I don't really want anyone snorting any derision at me, so they don't put forward the idea. And we've all seen the, the crackpot idea that everybody realises will never work actually might prompt somebody else to think of an idea that does work, which wouldn't otherwise ever have been articulated. So if you're happy to do that, uh, let's have some time brainstorming, and then later you can decide whether you're prepared to make any offers. I think that's a good idea. Are you happy idea. for me to write them up? I think we can have a discussion and then we can decide. Okay. okay. I agree. Okay, so Natalie, if I may, I'm very happy to hear that, you know, you want to continue to work with us and I think we would like that too, provided all our requirements are met. And I'm happy to hear that we also share another mutual interest, which is increasing the number of visitors there. You know, the entire purpose of coming to this exhibition for us is to make sure that we stand out amongst everyone else and we maximize the number of visitors. So yes, indeed, I'm happy that we can do this and you are interested in making sure that this exhibition is fruitful for us the way it is for you. Austin, I hear from you that uh, you're willing to drop the one million euro claim. Could you please elaborate on that about the delays? If you want to. Yeah. Just briefly before he gets into the legal claims, sure. just a little background on the delays. Because we will have our labor forces working another year and because of the material shortage, it increased our cost and we you know, for the whole project. And so that's where the, mil the one million number comes from. And I'm sorry if it came off that way, but I'm not speaking of dropping the one million claim at this moment, but I'm saying that is not imperative to what is 
going to happen moving forward. What is, is the 500,000 of cash flow. But I am letting you know what my client has incurred, what she is facing. This is, an, this is a tough thing to get through when you are lacking such funds. What I'm saying is the 500,000 that is withheld is what is causing this disruption. That is what we need to move forward. But I do want you to know that there is 1 million euros in damages that has been sustained. But again, I really don't wanna get stuck on these legal claims and concepts. I really wanna focus on my client's cash flow. That is what will help you. All right, thank you so much. And you also mentioned in your opening statement that you're certain that the project will be finished before the exhibition in September 2023. Could you please give me a timeline of when you expect that to happen? So, I can also touch on that because it's my designers, my engineers, my construction team. That will ultimately result from the, our conversation today as I know there are some modifications you wanted to discuss and again, if we can't have the increased, the 500,000, then the timeline would be very delayed. So unfortunately, I think I can't give you a specific timeline until after we've had this conversation today, and then I'd be very happy to immediately meet with my architects, my engineers, all of my site managers, and get you those very specific numbers. Thank you so much, Natalie and Austin, for addressing my client Mahreen's questions here. So what I hear from you is that the 500,000 euros is really important to inject liquidity into Speed Exhibit. Did I hear that correctly? Correct. Uh, while that is being said, um, what I also hear is that this discussion is not in relation to the 1 million that, you're, that you had asked for already for the delays and that you do not have the specific numbers about how much it will cost you to complete the project. Is that, am I hearing this correctly? Please feel free to corre uh, correct me. So yes, the 500,000 is the payment that you are currently withholding, which it would be great if you could explain a little bit as to your reasoning behind withholding that, because that is the 500,000 from our original contract that we agreed to and have not received payment for. So if you could elaborate on that, that would be great. But just to touch on your question, the other costs would be the increased building costs for the delay, and then as well as if there are any modifications to the design, that's a separate cost. Does that clarify it? Uh, so thank you, Natalie. Uh, so I'll ask, answer your question first and then I'll respond to what I think of your answer there. So the calculation of the 500,000 euros was based on a 10 week, on a 50 week, 10,000 per week delay costs because these are the liquidated damages that we assessed. As you know, the exhibition was supposed to happen in September 2022 first, and the contract was meant to be completed in that period. Of course, none of us anticipated the pandemic, and therefore neither did the people who wrote our contract, and the delay was not envisioned within it. Therefore, the one million claim, and I come back to what I think of your answer, is not really based within the scope of our contract. So which is why it sort of confuses both me and Swati where that's coming from. I unfortunately right now echo your confusion a little bit as to the 500,000 that's being withheld because if the event was delayed, I'm struggling and maybe, maybe my counsel understands it better than me. I'm not a lawyer, but I'm struggling to understand how that damage is really being felt um, on the weekly delay because the event has not happened and we are still on track to have the showcase completed in time for the event on the date that the event is happening with time for you to prepare the inside of the showcase. And if I may add, I would really like to know what does holding, withholding the 500,000 euros do for you for your benefit? Should I answer, Mahari? Sure. All right. Natalie, Austin, we hear you. The 500,000 is really important to you. Now, I can go into the legal specifics of why that 500,000 has been withheld. And honestly, Mary, you did a really good job at it as well. Um, but specifically, to give you an idea of why it happened, 
it's because the project was not completed within the time that it was promised to be completed in. And right now we're here first to discuss if it can be completed within that time. Secondly, again, what I hear from you about the one million that you were seeking is that that is again contingent to the modified designs that we have in mind and how we can incorporate that. Is that correct? So, no. So the one million is for the increased year of labor and materials due to the delay. Whereas the other money that we haven't even, I think, really started discussing the modifications, if we were to implicate modifications to the design, that would also cost more money. So I think that's a separate conversation. Um, if you wanted to. Yes, maybe if we take a second, maybe if we draw this, and if we may use you, Alan, to help separate what values are associated with what aspects of the contract. Um, that, yeah. that being, if we draw it out so we could all see where the, maybe the one million is for, would that help? Or do yeah, you think you understand? So how would you like that to be? Should we expressed? just have the numbers? Like for example, the 500,000 is withheld for delay. And then there is the one million for the year addition of time caused by the delay. And then, the modifications, we can put it maybe a number symbol because there's going to be a cost to it. We can discuss what modifications you want and go from there. the additional labor costs. Did you have a number on for design changes? I think we can just leave that as a, a number for now that we can discuss once we understand their specific. A blank would be I think that's perfect. Okay, yeah. Does that clarify kind of where the different monetary? Yes, okay, it does. Great. So, uh, Natalie, I, I understand this now. Thank you so much. And I do understand that the 500,000 that we had withheld, and as, my, as both I and Swati tried to explain, was a part of the liquidated damages on account of the delay in the contract. As you know, every contract and I think Swati will be able to explain it better, has a time period in which it should be completed. And since we are not going to court, and actually, you know what, you should take over. This is your job. <laughs> sure, Mahirim, yes. no problem. Yeah. Uh, like I said, again, the reason why the 500,000 was withheld was based on the terms of the contract. But again, Mahirim and I here are open to discussing solutions which can get the ball rolling in the direction of completing the project within the time. So on that note, we hear that the 500,000 is important to you and be assured that we have taken cognizance of it. In addition to that, I am, please do not take my questions and my curiosity as a negative you know, response to the 500K. I am willing to inject that because rest assured, we both have the same interest, which is to get the project back to where it was and get the balls rolling. So I am willing to inject it. However, for me, I, the one million does not make sense because it wasn't envisioned in the contract. The 500K was. So simply in terms of the contract, I think I will be willing to part with it provided I can get some reassurance that we can figure this into the design cost somehow, this remaining one million. What do you think about that? Yeah, I'll let my counsel discuss the contract. Could you? clarify the last part about using the one million for the design? I think Swati, you should do this this time. <laughs> right, so what my client Mahirin here is suggesting is that we talk a little more about the design. Now the way we see the contract working out is the improvements would also include the cost of labor right now that we needed to make those improvements. So we see 
the entire idea of moving forth and the cost of labor, all of this intertwined. And we'd like to talk about the specific scope of design that we'd want improved. Mehreen, probably you could shed a little more light on that. Yes, so like we've been discussing so far, our showcase has two general aspects. One is the general design of how the showcase looks. And then there is, of course, the intelligent facade, which we as Eregronians are super, super proud of. And that is something that is very crucial to us. However, I understand that for you, there are certain price points which will be pushed if our iconic standard and the expectations that we have are supposed to be met. So I want to hear you as to what do you think are the possible things that we can do at this stage which serve both of our purposes, which is A, make it appropriate for the visitors and make it stand out among other countries, but also B, doing it within the restraints of our budget. Thank you. Yeah. Just say one thing. Yeah. I just want to clarify and I want to repeat it back to make sure I understand where that 1 million euros is going. You are considering using those funds from your side of the table to move that number down to the design changes. Instead of us pursuing that claim, you are willing to spend a million for the design changes for the completed for your goal. Is that correct? Um, Austin, I'm I'm sorry if I came across uh, that way, but what I'm you're almost there. What we are suggesting is that instead of just separately talking about the labor costs that are incurred because you're working in this additional year, we talk about the design itself, the proposed design that we want incorporated, and the costs associated with that, which I'm sure would include the labor costs as well. But that does not suggest that the cap here is one million or anything like that. We broadly want to talk about the design uh, the scope of the design and like your quote on how much it can be done for. Did, did that answer? Okay. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to clarify, and I'm really excited to discuss the possible options and share our interests and talk about what your vision is. But I do just want to make sure we understand where we landed with the 500,000 that's been being withheld because like I mentioned, we can't even consider con continuing building without that guarantee. So I just, maybe I missed it, but I just wanted to make sure, did we land that that's something that you'll stop withholding? Yes, I will just clarify myself here. I said that I will be willing to release that amount given that we can discuss the payment. So in principle, I think I agree, but let's put a pin on it for certainty until we discuss the design changes. So I'm really excited to hear what you have in mind for us. Mahi, um, before we do that, Alan, there's been a lot of uh, back and forth, and clearly there was a lot of confusion, but hopefully I think we've cleared out the air. Austin, Natalie, uh, is there any more confusion about the numbers here? I think we would either ways benefit from Alan. A, yeah, a summary from Alan. <laughs> <laughs> As I understand it, um, you're saying that um, provided you can be satisfied as to the design and the timing of completion. You're willing to release the withheld 500,000 and to pay an amount appropriate to achieve the design within that time, which may or may not amount to or exceed what's been articulated as, as a, an additional labor cost. So, I mean, one possibility is it might cost twice as much as the one million. The main thing is to get it finished in time to the iconic design you have in mind. And my understanding from your point of view before we arrived was that the changes to the design that were being made were costing you or going to cost you more than you had previously bargained for. So if we get into brainstorming, it's a question of what design is going to be achievable within that time and how much is it going to cost and whether you're prepared to pay for it. Something like that? Yes, that's actually quite accurate. You did it in five <laughs> seconds. It took us 20 minutes. Thank so you we so don't much. Need, we, don't need to, we don't need to call to designate those numbers 
under any particular heading. Yeah. It's rather a question of working out what you can do to complete the contract in accordance with a design that will work in time for the exhibition. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I think you perfectly captured the essence of what we've been trying to talk about for the last 20 minutes. So yes, Natalie, I'm excited to hear about the designs. Yes, thank you, and thank you very much for your summary. I echo, <laughs> you did it much more efficiently. <laughs> um, as a contracting company that has over 12 years of experience and has you know, built structures for events at, for the ICE event in the past, we're used to having these turnkey, as what my council taught me about recently, <laughs> contracts. And usually the way that works is we have a budget and we provide some of our ideas and you say, yes, no, we talk it through. And that's how this project had worked. And then now with the delays and the increased cost of building, and now we're learning that you aren't as happy with our plans going forward when my engineers and my architects reevaluated some of the heightened ideas that were presented from your team, it just is more expensive than we had originally planned on, that we had originally contracted for. And frankly, in the time that we have left and the foundation that we've laid as the project has begun, you know, the bases of the showcase are there, the expenses are out of our control as to if we can implement exactly what you would like. And so I would really like to hear if you have any specific requests about the rest of the building or if you have any areas where you think that we would be able to satisfy that iconic design standard. Um, that you haven't been able to express so far. So thank you so much for that, Natalie. Uh, you know, the entire intention of coming to this exhibition, and as I've mentioned this before, is to stand out. So I really want visitors to come look at it and not resist the urge of you know walking right in. So I want it to look perfect. I want it to look irresistible. And I want everything that they can access from outside to look as if, you know, it's pulling them inside. That's, that's, that's what Irigaron stands for. It should, it should stand for the green buildings, for the sustainability and the environmental friendly uh, architecture that we so, so support. But that is one aspect of it. The other aspect obviously remains the intelligent facade because that is, again, our key feature here today at the ICE and in this discussion as well. So do you have any ideas of how we can make the, the facade look more efficient and have the same effect without making, let's say, deep structural changes, which might not cost as much, I hope? Thank you for that question. Yeah, I'll discuss that. Thank you. And I'm really happy to hear that you would like your building to stand out, and I know that's your intention, and as you know, as our company needs to maintain our reputation in this industry, so we are trying to build the building that will get the most visitors to come and experience your, your culture. And with that being said, we have the ability to consider those intelligent facade modifications um, that would you know, work with the environmentally friendly aspects. And something that I think we could propose is implementing the south side of the building to have the prominent facade, uh, I mean the intelligent facade, um, if that's something you'd be interested in. However, I do have to just note that the modification would still cost additional money compared to the contract that we had originally entered into. Can you give me an idea of, because I understand the south elevation is quite a limited space, and if you're only working at the facade, that's, that's not very deep. It's not a deep structural change. So could you give me an idea of how much that would cost me? Yeah, so probably, yeah. So the range, so we had, with some of the considerations that we had for making these modifications, we had been in the range of about two million for, um, for multiple different changes. However, with the facade, and again, I don't have my accountant up here or my engineers, but it would be about a quarter of that, I would likely assume. Natalie, I'm sorry, I couldn't catch the number towards the end. Can you please repeat that? 
Within the range of the two million for the additions, I would say that it would be about a quarter of that. However, again, I would love to get those exact numbers to you after this meeting once we can discuss with our architects, um, but principally the south facade. I would just like to gain a small clarification here. When we're speaking about the south facade, are we speaking of purely improving or elevating the south facade, or are we talking about integrating the um, intelligent facade into the south elevation? Because what I understood, Mehreen, is that these two are separate things. One would fall under general improvements, and the other one specifically about the AI. So if you can please just give me some clarity, um, I think it would be great. Yeah, it's introducing the, in the facade to the south side of the structure. Okay. So just to be clear here, the intelligent facade, which is the environmentally engineered interactive facade, that will be put on the south elevation, and the quote you're giving me is a quarter of two million, and if my maths is correct, 500,000 euros. <laughs> I think the best way to do the specific numbers would be to talk about the totality of the modifications that we want to make, and then we can provide the exact accounting and the exact engineering once we consider what we want to make. I didn't come with those numbers today, especially because we didn't even know if we could move forward without that guarantee that we're so happy to have. And so we do have that general quote that we had talked about, but yes, we can you know, continue discussing all of the modifications with your total budget. Natalie Austin, again, I'm really happy to hear that you do have some quotes, but I would also like to just remind everyone here that this mediation is happening because this is a time pressed concern as well. So it's really important for us to have all the figures in place. And since, like both Mehreen and I have emphasized so much that this is public money that we are spending and we are accountable for every single penny that's going out, it's important that these costs do not inflate after this mediation as well. I would just like to uh, bring this up again. Yeah. And now, oh, so sorry. sorry, if you. Please go ahead, Natalie. And I will say that now that we have that, gear, that ability to have the 500,000 not withheld anymore, I will give you my personal guarantee that we will have our employees working on this project right away that we can continue moving forward and my you know, good mm -hmm. faith understanding of that. So that is really, I, I agree with the timeliness and it was unfortunate that the work did have to halt without that money. Um, so Natalie, I, I understand that the 500,000 is crucial to you, but for me, it is conditional, unfortunately, because as long as I don't know that the project can happen within the budgets, the budgetary constraints that I have. And I'm being a little frank here. It makes no sense for me to come to you or stick with you, right? Because as much as I want to, believe me, uh, and please, please do not consider this to be in any way a negative like connotation anyhow, but, uh, if you, if you, you know, you, you're talking about the one million, you're talking about another two million, if I'm catching all of that correctly. So that's, that's what we're looking at, a total of three million in addition to the 500,000. And, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a government body and we do have to ask around to make sure that we're getting the best price because again, public money, we've said that enough, I think. Um, from my inquiries, I found out that even if I go with another contractor at this stage, even after pay paying a premium price, what I will be paying them will be to the tune of three million. So sticking with you only makes sense to me if I know I'm getting a better deal. Because again, I'm not doing this for myself. I have to get my government and I'm not just answerable to the public here. I, I have to talk to the ministry, the, the ministers there. You know I'm answerable to everyone. So I really need to know the numbers so that I can tell them that, hey, I'm making great use of your money. And please, you know, let this happen with them. Because, you know, I know you, you talk about your reputation and, you know, having this uh, contract conclude and going to IC is extremely important to your reputation as well. So I think given the time press nature of this, we would really, really like to listen to some numbers associated with the designs. 
I think you perfectly captured everything that we here today to talk about. Maybe if you can hear Natalie and Austin on that. May I ask a question? Are, are you talking about completing the project in accordance with design changes that have already been articulated, not additional changes? So we had specified a number of changes and they'd quoted about two million for it. But now in this process, as Natalie suggested, we're willing to reduce those requests and come down to a number and design changes, which would allow us to complete the project, not just in time, but also in less cost. Does that clarify? Right, so you're not requiring um, speed exhibit to meet the demands that have previously been made? No, these are the demands that have previously been made. We're just reducing them. We're rather defining the scope of the And everybody's clear on what they are and to yeah. what extent you're reducing them. The first think, point we uh, I do, I will say, it, it might be helpful. So the nature of construction projects are that if you're making three modifications, the labor, the materials, it works together, right? So the quote could come if we had a totality of an understanding of what you are looking for. So if you have any other interests, but in addition to the intelligent facade, that would be really great to learn about now so that we could work to try to provide an adequate quote. All right, you know, I will very clearly lay down the requirements that I have and then perhaps we can, you know, hear a number. So like I mentioned before, I want the building to look absolutely amazing from the outside. So as you suggested, the south elevation is the one that faces the general compound in the exhibit. So I would like the so southern elevation to, be, to look great. The rest of it, I think we can let go at this stage. The second thing that would be crucial to me is that we have a ground floor which leads to the restaurant where we serve our irrigoron delicacies, great food. In fact, you guys should come. It's amazing. Uh, I would like that ground floor layout to look absolutely amazing. In addition to these two things, of course, the intelligent facade, we've already discussed that. So that's that. And I don't think there's anything else that my board would require me to bring up on priority. All right. So Alan, could you please jot down these two, these two um, three. Yeah. three design changes that we've just proposed? Mehreen, would you want to? Yeah. Three designs. Three. designs. <laughs> so the first one would be south elevation. Generally, the building looks amazing, is that right? Yeah. Yes. So this first one is the south elevation, yes. So if the south facade looks yes. amazing, you're not worried about the rest of it? Yes. <laughs> and then the ground... It will all look great. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope so. Yeah. Then the ground floor layout. And the intelligent facade. That's not the same. No, that's not the same. They said they'd integrate the intelligent facade into the south facade. And in fact, I'm curious about that. Do you think integrating those two will reduce costs by any chance? Integrating the intelligent facade on the south? Yes. I think it will still be the same, it, it will still be the same cost, it's just doing them. It, the facade will make the south side look amazing, right? They're a simultaneous project. All right. Yeah. I think that's good. So it doesn't have to be the south facade, yeah. but it could be the south facade. Yes. Yes. But because it's the prominent facing side, it makes the most sense to put it there. Well, I'll put an arrow up here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for laying out. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you for laying that out. I appreciate it. Very yeah. Helpful. 
Yes, thank you very much. And um, it's great to hear that you're interested in making some changes to the restaurant um, on the ground floor because that is something we had considered um, as we were in our conversations. And I know you're representing um, your, the government and that its increase of public access is something that you would likely prioritize. And so we were hoping to redesign the restaurant in a way that would increase that public access as well as you know the ground floor, floor layout being truly amazing. And hopefully after these mediations, once we build the restaurant, we could share a meal together. Well, that would be lovely. Um, so we can definitely agree to the restaurant um, ground floor layout. And obviously, you know, we can, we'll show the design. I'm not the architect who will come up with it, but we'll definitely get that. Is there an, is there a, a cost that you can estimate for achieving all of that, that you would need to receive in order to meet the time deadline? Thank you, Alan. That yes. was going to be our next yes. question. I, yeah, I just wanted to make sure this was the totality of your modification requests at this stage. Yeah, looking at these specific requests, we can do the um, modifications for 1.5 million. Uh, can, can, I get a, yeah. can I get a breakdown of how that would work? I don't have the specific breakdown with me from my accounting team. However, that is something that we would love to get you an itemized options for after this meeting. We could get it right after, um, because all we have are the quotes for the general project. If I may ask one question, is one aspect more important than the other in terms of cost? Uh, so um, there is no, so of course, the entire thing should look good and all of these things are the prominent facing side. So we don't want to prioritize one over the other. All of them are important, but collectively the project should remain within our budgetary constraints. So how, how are we? Just if if yeah, I sorry. may on that note. Yes. The demands, we had the agreement for 12 million. And I'm sorry for getting back into the council position here. Um, I really like the direction it's all going. My client has been doing this for 12 years, has amazing tra foot traffic. Visitors come specifically for ex her exhibits. She has been putting the utmost effort in from what I have seen and I have heard. Your nation has very high demands, higher than normal, but we want to fulfill those desires. The iconic standard from our point of view, every design so far has been iconic. Yours is gonna be super iconic. So these additions, there are costs, it's just the reality. But I believe that we can come to a number that works. And if I could build on that, very appreciated. I, I, maybe I misheard you when you were discussing potentially utilizing a different contracting company that your budgetary con, um, opportunity with them would have been three million? No, that's the opportunity cost, not the budgetary constraints. As in, even if we wanted to go with someone, it would amount to the same money that you're asking for, so the opportunity cost, but that is not a budgetary constraint. Could you touch on your budgetary constraints at all in, you know, in hopes of a very open conversation? So our budgetary constraints are very particular to the kind of designs we're having. So depending on the quote you have and depending on what we're willing to get our minister to approve is what our budgetary constraints would be. But you best believe our budgetary constraint is the best deal possible, so. And right now, the 1.5 million with the 500,000 you need for liquidity and the additional 1 million for um, the additional labor cost you're asking, it's all amounting back to 3 million. And again, this is not something that's feasible to us right now, but we're so glad that we're making so much headway and having an open conversation here. Uh, Austin, just to like briefly talk about the iconic standard you mentioned, we from our side feel that there was just not enough consensus or understanding as to what our requirements were in the first place. To you, what is iconic was not sufficient for my client. And that is not to say that you did not do a good job, but it is to probably acknowledge that we all come from different cultural backgrounds. And here at the forefront, we'd like to present Erigron's culture 
on the building facade here, which is why it's really important for my client to meet those requirements. Again, we understand where you're coming from, but we also hope you understand where my client is coming from with respect to the display of culture itself. I think like with that, probably we can um, get back to that. Oh, that's on the board right now about the south facade, ground floor, intelligent facade. Yeah, I think it would help if you could clarify if your interest lies in lowering the cost or making the specific modifications that you want. Because unfortunately, at the, the time we're at, you know, I, I think we just have to get on the same page with. That. So, yeah, Natalie, my original expectations, you told me, would cost me two million. So I lowered my expectations. Now you're telling me it still comes about right there. So I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable about it because this is nothing compared to what, you know, we've been talking about so far. And, you know, Alan, we've had multiple rounds of discussion before this. But if, if, the, if the difference is not as much, it, it really doesn't sit right with me. So I feel like, could you perhaps take another look at the numbers and perhaps you could give me a better quote? I, I'm a little unclear with your question. What would you be willing to pay if those were implemented perfectly? Swati, what are our numbers here? Let's take a look. If you don't mind, we, I'm just gonna have a quick chat here with Swati. So Swati is telling me that I can do one million here. One million for the modifications. Yes. Sep Both, all three of the modifications that have been put on the board. In, in the effort of being able to go back to my board, and I know you have a ministry to be held accountable for. I think these conversations have been very fruitful and will continue to be, but I, I don't really wanna get stuck on these specific numbers because prior to coming in here today, our work was stopped because of the lack of cash flow and we didn't know specifically what you were hoping to modify and the nature of the contracting industry really relies on labor costs, material costs, and now that we have a specific understanding of what you're hoping to get out of this, and we understand that we will be moving forward with the work, we will be able to provide those numbers Natalie, very soon. How about this? So I understand the 500K was a problem for you. How about I go back, I give a call, and Monday, first thing, you'll have the payment. Does that make your machine running? Does that? It definitely would allow us to be running, but it still wouldn't allow me to have the specific accounting numbers and quotes. No, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. yet to finish, sorry. Um, so once that's there, I give you one million upfront and you get the project ready in time for me before September 2023. How does that sound? In addition to that, and because this is an extremely time-pressed issue for us, and we are not willing to wait on it for too long because you see that you know we'll have to consider alternatives if this doesn't move forward, or you know, or else you know the reputation of a rigor on at ICE is in trouble. I will throw in not five but four hundred thousand, provided that the total number of visitors over there at the at our showcase exceeds. 10% of the visitors at IC in total. And like Austin said, that shouldn't be a problem because you think our building is iconic enough and the demand seems to be high enough. So, and we, we, we meet quite close to each other then. How do, what do you think about that? Could you break down or explain farther the 400,000 well, no, numbers? I'm just, just so we don't it. I think Swati. Or, and clarify the offer in general. Okay. I need it. I will just give a breakdown. Firstly, the quote that you had given us 
to make all the improvements that have been put on the board is 1.5 million. Is that correct? Correct. But for both Mehreen and I today representing NTB, that's simply like to be very transparent and forthcoming. It's not feasible and we really do want to work with you. We want to make headway. So the offer that we can put or the option right now, like you said, nothing's <laughs> set in stone until it is set in stone. Um, so the option that we can have here is one million for all the improvements. The 500,000 is to just inject liquidity to complete the project in time. And the additional 400,000 that Mehreen had mentioned is to perhaps help you meet that 1.5. We cannot meet that 1.5 yet, but the 400,000 is something that you can get provided your design can actually capture the attention of more than 10% of the total visitors at the venue, at the exhibition. We'd just like to hear your thoughts on this. And if I may add, the 10% will also, I don't know, I don't want to use the word incentivize, but encourage you to make our building a little more iconic than you've been doing so far. Yeah. Yes. Do you understand all that? Yes. Okay. Thank so you for the so long as you do. slow, careful breakdown. <laughs> I appreciate it. So you're offering 1 million for the improvements, the 500,000 for liquidity Monday, and then an additional 400,000, correct? Yes. Okay. And that, is that 400,000 in addition to, let's say the total of now 12 million plus 1 million? Yes, the, the rest of it has been paid already. Okay, yeah. great. And then that, the, just to clarify, the 400,000 was your contingency with the 10% yes. of visitors. Yes. The great news that I can offer is that we do historically have at least 10% of the entire um, event going through our showcases. So that's wonderful because we're always striving to improve that number. And like you said, it will be great encouragement. Maybe it will be in the 12s, 13s. I don't, you know, it could be a great year. So that that's, seems like we're really on the same page with the contingency. I may have one second. I have a quick idea. Thank you very much for that offer. I did just want to add one concept that might really work on improving the visitor numbers. And this is some, uh, an opportunity that we could add to the design if you are interested. And if not, I think the groundwork we've laid was great. But in, you know, in the hopes of continuing to work together, I just really want you to be happy with the result. And we have an opportunity where we can implement very recent technology that would allow robotic construction. And what that is, is that a robot would be doing some of the work and be filmed, and then the visitors can watch how this happened. And it's been a very popular, you know, it brings in kids, it brings in people who are excited about engineering and robots. And it's something that we could do in addition to those modifications for But the total would increase um, of the cost, obviously, if we wanted to implement it. So it would go towards your goal of increasing your visitors, but the cost would increase. So if that's something you're interested in, we'd be happy to discuss it. Natalie, I think this is a very um, exciting prospect for Mehreen and I here. But can you please help me understand how the introduction of this robotic um, machine is different from the intelligent facade that we already agreed to install? So it, it would be in addition to. So it's a way where visitors can watch the technology. So if I get it correctly, intelligent facade is an environmentally engineered and interactive facade. So it just seems to me that this robotic idea of yours would fall within that ambit. Um, I'm, I just, please help me understand how it's different. So I can add. It, it would fall together. It works with the artificial intelligence facade. It would, the robotics is gonna be included in its creation, setting it up, which will be filmed. And the idea is that this will be an exhibit in addition to the structure that is being built. 
And we hope and believe that this could be something that you can bring back as a great idea that your government will approve. And oh, hopefully, it's the latest technology, not to mention it is green technology. So it meets your sustainable interests. And we hope it could bring more traffic to meet the 10% plus that you're looking for. And we bring it up now because we understand your interest in increasing that visitors to pass 10%. And it's mm -hmm. just an idea we have to increase that number. So before I think about that, uh, Alan, I'm going to have you pull you in. He I'm going to have to pull you in here and just have you summarize everything that has gone in before I can think about that because it's getting a bit too much for me here. I don't think you're the only one. <laughs> <laughs> um, as I understand it, um, those are the design ingredients that the south facade will become an amazing looking intelligent facade there'll be a change to the ground floor layout um, that you would pay the five hundred thousand up front um, and i think you were saying that, that you'd be prepared to pay a million up front to make sure it's done by september and an addition of 400,000, um, those numbers appear to be acceptable to you and you're, in addition, you're offering um, a robot to do some of the work on the intelligent facade which would then itself become a movie that would interest yes. spectators. Um, but there'd have to be an additional payment for that to happen which hasn't yet been articulated. Mm -hmm. um, so I hope that's a summary. I'm wondering why you want to demolish this building once it's been built. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you should ask the exhibition people that, not me. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's the nature of the business. <laughs> Does that summarize where you're up to? Yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Alan. So that brings me back to the robotic uh, experience. So help me understand a little more about it. Is this robo a robot going to replace some labor or is it just an additional feature? I'm, I'm a little lost here. It's an additional feature that okay. brings more people to want to go to the showcased building. It's, it's new, it's innovative, especially after you know the delays. It's just something we've been floating around as a way to bring more people to be interested in that technology. So it's very interesting to me. And since my entire premise, my entire idea, intention comes Coming here was to get the maximum number of visitors so that you know we can have more investments, more trade. That sounds incredibly exciting to me. But again, I come back to the thing that I've been doing like a broken radio here. But uh, what are the costs? Again, I will give you the exact specifics, but our quote would be 500,000. Swati, what do we think about that? Okay, let's just let's just like revisit the numbers a bit here. Um, so far, our option, the one that we put forth, has been one million for the three improvements: south, intelligent, ground floor. Injecting five hundred thousand liquidity, and incentivizing with another four hundred thousand. Mm, and now another five million. Five, oh, 500,000. Sorry. <laughs> that, would be, sorry. <laughs> that would be an expensive robot. <laughs> that would be an expensive robot. 500,000. And I also gather that we're yet to discuss about the possibility of any inflation of the costs, which is something that we absolutely cannot want. We just cannot have that at this stage. If, if just an assurance, these numbers are going to be the numbers in case we agree upon them? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. And I just want to reassure you as well, because I know time is a worry. Yes. As long as this is on paper by February 28th, it will be ready. All right. In time for you to prepare how, how for How are you the going event? to deal with the possibility of a recurrence of the kind of pandemic that we've had if this should happen between now and September? I'm going to leave that up to the lawyers. Yeah, Swati. <laughs> Austin, that's your issue. <laughs> Maybe another when one. I look at the contract, 
I see that it's supposed to be ready within a specified timetable. How I read it, it has to be ready for the opening. That is what we abide by. When this was written, it was to be opening in 2022. To be frank, I don't know if it would have been the best project if we had it ready with the short materials and laborers, and it would be sitting there for a full year. So with that being said, I think the prospect of COVID, we should maybe amend it so it's ready for the open. Open name, apologies. So I'm glad that you brought that up because instead of the opening this time, and you know, we made that we made that choice in our previous contract. Instead of that, let's make a different choice here today and just specify 1st September 2023. That way we have a distinct date. And if, the, if there's any other reason, it doesn't have to be COVID, it could be something with the exhibition itself because of which it gets delayed. Let's not leave it up to you know, fate to decide when this contract ends. Just hopping right up from your suggestion, let's put it as 1st September 2023. How does that sound? Is that even possible legally, Swati? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Oh, okay. It's just setting things in certainty on paper. Mm -hmm. um, and just to add to that, we also wouldn't want it to be ready and operational at the nick of time, right? So 1st September is when we want it to be on display, but I think at least a month prior to 1st September, we'd be looking at having um, a ready functional model. If I may, if we agree on the specifications which you have the final say on, then we will be able to have it ready by that date. The issue previously was the design was never approved. So with that being said, in remarks to the time constraint, if we do have this agreement in place by the date I mentioned, February 28th, we should be able to have it ready within a time frame between July 21st, 2023, and between, between then and August 18th, 2023. That works perfectly for us, but I think we should circle right back into the design changes and the costs, because like you said, you know, earlier the issue was also, you know, the back and forth about the design. So as long as we're clear about the designs and I think we'll be sticking to one agenda here, we can also come back to the time. What do you think, Natalie? Yeah, I think that's great. And he was very correct on the projected timeline, so. Okay, so just one final quote about the robotics and then we can decide whether we want it or not. And let, just, yeah, let us know if you have any questions more about the robotics or the cost. Uh, the costs, I think the only question I have is, can you do it for less? <laughs> I can, what I can do is I can ask my engineers who, you know, especially with the robotics, and we will prioritize doing everything that we can at the most cost, you know, at the lowest cost that we can for you, as I understand you're serving a large government, but the numbers I have are the numbers I have right now. Let me just ask you this one question. What impact exactly do you see in terms of um, the increase in the number of visitors can you project if we introduce robotics here? As I said before, we, um, our previous exhibits have had that 10% of visitors. And although I, because it hasn't happened yet, this technology didn't exist you know, prior to this upcoming showcase, so we don't have any past specific percentages that I can talk about. I will say my marketing team and my engineers have all expressed their reassurance of their excitement of the ability to bring in visitors. And I think especially when you have the improved restaurant and the amazing facade that's going to be super iconic, it will just increase the numbers. But again, because this is so new and innovative, we don't have that specific percentage to give you. Well, that's interesting. That's definitely something for us to think about. Um, how about I tell you, and I'm being completely sincere and honest and frank and transparent here, my upper limit for this robotics project, this enhancement would be about 300 to 350,000. And if we can do it under that, I will be happy to do it. But like you said, the 400,000, which is contingent on the 10% visitors, that's not an issue for you at all because your exhibits have in the past anyways 
you know, garner those that, that much attention. Mm -hmm. So if you can do it within that, I think Swati and I will be happy to consider that. And just to add to that, if the um, robotic installation is done within 300,000, I'm just clarifying the number here, Mahri. Yes. 300,000. Um, this would be the total cost that we're willing to invest into this project. And we really hope that here we can reach that middle ground because Mehreen and I have come a long way in how much we can spend. And again, yeah. there is a ministry to go back and answer to. There is the public whose money we are spending here. A lot of accountability that's there on our side. And we also just need a reassurance that beyond this, the costs do not spill out. Thank you for that with being open and honest about your upper limit, really, really helpful. What would the total amount be for all the improvements, including the robotics? 1.7. Would it be 1.7? Do we have that correct? Yes, that's like an absolute upper limit. That is 1.3 million and 400,000 contingent to the 10% visitor yeah. requirement. So, Saying 1.7 isn't really accurate right now. 1.3 plus 400 contingent. Well, the uh, plus the 500. Plus the yeah. 500. Plus 500. Thank you so much, Alan. <laughs> well, what would we do without Alan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that especially with the 500,000 guaranteed after your phone call on Monday, I think that we can definitely make your improvements happen within that 1.7 total cost. And we would be looking forward to having our designers, you know, give you the specific designs so that you can look at them and that we can figure out those exact specifics. But I think we've came to a great agreement here. Yes, so that's indeed. a total of 2.2 .2 altogether if you took everything into account. Yes. Yes. Okay. 1.7, 1.8 plus, yeah, okay. 1.8 plus 400,000 contingent to the visitor requirement. Okay. So if, you, if you've agreed, we need the lawyers to write it down. <laughs> yes. And we can also write down the time frame that um, Austin was suggesting. 1st July 2023. Uh, let me get the exact dates again. It's on another pad. In the time frame between July 21st and August 18th. That time frame works perfectly for us. Wonderful. Great. And I think if I just look back to the interest that we'd set, money's taken care of, time has been very kindly taken care of, and designs, you know, if we're able to work this out, are taken care of. So I think, Swati, we've had quite a collaborative discussion. I'm so happy we could do this, Natalie. Do you want to just lay everything down so that all of us can remember it in the same way again? Like, just to make sure all of us are on the same page. Yes. yes. Yeah. Coming into this discussion, initially itself, I had said that we primarily want to discuss about time, design, money, and I think we checked all three boxes. So for that, we're extremely elated, and thank you so much for being collaborative. I've just uh, got one more question, I'm sorry. I understand, for some reason or other, the building is to be demolished <laughs> eventually. Um, is that at an additional cost, or does somebody else do that? That's included. It's a we, turnkey contract. It's yeah, we do that, but that is already accounted for. It's already taken yes. into account. Okay, well done. Yes. Yeah. I see Alan's really <laughs> hurt, <laughs> hurting about the demolishing yeah. here. Well, Alan, you should definitely come and visit it at least before it's demolished then. Yes. We'll take lots of pictures before we demolish yeah. it. <laughs> well, so, the lawyers have five minutes to write up the settlement agreement. Yes. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Quick. <laughs> Just well. brief points. So about the time, like Austin had suggested, July 21st to August 28th of, uh, sorry, August 18th, my bad, of 2023, this year, to be ready for the exhibit on 1st September 2023. About the design improvement, there's south elevation integrated with the intelligent facade. There is the enhancement to the ground floor layout, which gives access to the restaurants. Please do come and visit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
Additionally, there's this new and exciting offer to introduce robotics, an interactive robot to enhance the visitor experience. So these are the four, yes, 3.5 um, <laughs> improvements that are in the Anvil. And lastly, about the money, 500,000 for the liquidity, 1.3 for the 3.54 uh, improvements updates, and the 400,000 contingent amount for meeting a 10% visitor aggregate with the reassurance that the amount doesn't further spill out. If we're on the same page about this, uh, Alan, I think I, this has been a great session. Yeah. Thank you for I that agree. rundown. Yes. And we will be visiting, or we build, we're going to build it. So we will be at the restaurant. <laughs> well, you'll we be will be at the restaurant. Hopefully you'll join us. <laughs> yes. Well, we should adjourn to the restaurant. Yes, let's <laughs> head there. Well right. Let's Thank celebrate. you so much. Thank you. Can you please take your seats? So um, I would like now to kindly ask Mr. Ronald Austin to please join me on stage. Ronnie represents Clifford Chance, the headline sponsor of the competition, and will say a few words about the competition. Ronnie, the floor is yours. Well, first of all, it's, it's great to be back live in Paris. I mean, I only live around the corner, but some of you have come a long, long way. Uh, but this competition needs you in order to survive, and I'll explain that. This competition has been what I call the Davos of the mediation world with a full-blown education educational and social programs which have attracted students and professionals from all over the world at their own expense. Now, the universities pay registration fees, but that in no way covers uh, it, the, the cost of this competition, particularly in its past glory. And this year's sponsors, together with Clifford Chance, we can't make up the shortfall on our own. And this is where you can all come in, because the competition provides a wonderful, um, uh, um, a wonderful vector to promote a brand to an international and an, in, an, an intergenerational audience. And I'd like to tell you a story which happened during the competition a few years ago. There was a mediator who was mediating, uh, obviously, two teams. And one of the teams was a team from Bucerius University in Hamburg. And the mediator suddenly realized that he had a major German international fund client in Hamburg. So he contacted the client, and they came to see the competition, and then they agreed to be a sponsor. So what I'm saying is that each of you, uh, whether you're professionals, but also whether you're stu students, you must, this is an international commercial competition, so you have your relations in the commercial world, in the world of business. Think whom could you contact, and then share your thoughts with um, Alia and her team. Now, that being said, I'd like to say thank you very much indeed to the, the organizing team of Alia, the new lady, Elisabetta, Stephanie, who's been here since time immemorial, and Eva, a new lady, and also to say thank you to the volunteers who do a very, in my view, a very professional uh, job indeed. So on that note, I'll let you carry on, because I know you don't want to hear me, you really want to know the results, but they are coming soon. Thank you.
Thank you, Rani. Now I would like to I would like you to please welcome Mr. Alexander Fesas, the Director of ICC Dispute Resolution Services and Secretary General of ICC Court of Arbitration, who will be conducting the award ceremony. Alex, the floor is yours. In, live in Paris we are, and how interesting and fantastic it is to be doing it uh, again in 2023 in person in Paris. Now, I'm, I got a little rusty at this because the last time, two times I did it was uh, through a live uh, stream uh, online, um, it was on YouTube I think, from uh, our headquarters, minus two, and as I was speaking, there was a background, slightly smaller and probably a little bit less heavy than this one, I think, but it fell on me. So I, uh, and there's an outtake somewhere about that, from that. So I'm hoping, now that we've gone through 90 minutes and maybe a little bit more of time here, that um, all of this wonderful structure is going to hold. Uh, so, good morning everyone. I'm Alex Fesas. I'm here in my capacity as Director of ICC Dispute Resolution Services. I work with Alia and her fantastic team on matters related to mediation and other forms of ADR, uh, like expertise, dispute boards, and a host of other services. I won't take too much of your time, but I would like, first of all, to echo the wonderful um, message that Ronnie already relayed to all of you. Uh, the competition is a wonderful opportunity, and I think unique, actually, for students, uh, their universities, professionals and also our organization to actually get together for something really good. I was hearing as I was coming in um, a, a student congratulating one of the um, uh, finalists today uh, saying uh, congratulations for your performance. And I thought that was a wonderful thing to say. But bear in mind that ultimately mediation is about managing risk. It's about companies engaging together, transacting, trading, and as you very uh, aptly saw today, having issues and potentially disputes that can be resolved in a host of different ways. And what we have been trying to do through this competition and more broadly at ICC is explaining to the future practitioners and those who actually already work within companies at law firms and other service providers how to manage that risk and, where possible, mitigate that risk. And as students and our fellow colleagues of tomorrow, you are also here for that. And uh, to the professionals, we owe it to those students to actually ensure that this competition will go on. Now, we had 27 countries represented this year among the 47 uh, competing teams a total of about 170 students present throughout the week. We welcome for the first time uh, the Royal Institute Colombo from Sri Lanka. I don't know if they're here. There you are. Welcome. <laughs> Strathmore, Strathmore from Kenya. Good morning. And Hanoi from Vietnam. A hundred and twenty professionals, uh, mediators, trainers, uh, and of course also those who uh, took, uh, undertook uh, the formal uh, uh, roles of, of, of judges, uh, timekeepers, and so on and so forth, and about 40 uh, volunteers helping with all of that. Am I, am I doing well? Okay, good. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, this year is also very special for us at ICC because it's the hundredth anniversary of the establishment of the ICC Court, uh, International Court of Arbitration. And just for those of you who may not know arbitration, if this had failed, which wonderfully didn't, the parties may have resorted actually either before a court to litigate, or they could have gone before a private justice forum to resolve this dispute. And probably they would have, uh, seeing the characteristics and of course the, the level of, um, of expertise. And we have been doing that since the very early 1920s, uh, serving the same goals, basically, that we serve through providing mediation services and all the rest. 
access to justice, and it, it's, it seems rather simple, or maybe broad, but it's so true, what we have been doing is actually providing avenues, if you like, options uh, for parties to, again, use as a framework to resolve their disputes and sometimes even prevent them altogether. And in the context of the centenary of the court, we're really looking beyond just arbitration or just typical dispute resolution. But again, we want companies to use, and lawyers, of course, to use all tools in the toolbox. And that's where mediation and all the other ADL services come into play. And we also know that in order to do that, it's not just providing the access to justice. There's more that we need to do, namely capacity building, education, like the mediation competition, building the global community. And again, if we look at the representation from the many, many parts of the world here today, we understand how this global community comes together and really nourishes and informs our understanding of business uh, around the world. And of course, diversity and inclusion. Um, it, this would not have been possible uh, without our sponsors, and you will see all of them, I think, uh, flashing by in a minute. I would like, of course, to thank particularly uh, Clifford Chance, our headline sponsor, and also uh, Sciences Po and uh, uh, Professor Diego Fernandez Arroyo, who's also the director of the LLM on International Arbitration and Dispute Settlements, um, who uh, gratefully mediated for us to uh, be hosted today here at this wonderful hall. Um, all volunteers, teams, coaches, and professionals, of course, particularly the working groups, uh, on rules uh, with Ronnie, Austin, Natasha, Tunko, uh, Joy Davis, Gary, I, I don't know if Gary Birnberg is in today, uh, and Claude Amar, the working group on problems uh, with Greg Bond, and uh, Chris Myers. Now, you've already heard others, uh, dear friends, uh, speak of Chris's and his very sad departure. We are indeed very saddened to learn of his passing just a few uh, days ago. Chris was a very experienced dispute resolution uh, expert uh, in, in various fields of, of, uh, of uh, various types of uh, different procedures. He had uh, formed his own company in the late 90s, which then a few years later merged with HKA, and he was a permanent fixture uh, of the competition and indeed a great contributor to uh, the uh, working groups of this competition that make it work. And we will very much miss him. I would like to call now the organizing committee, uh, Elisabetta Pilati, <laughs> Eva, Eva Christova, there you are. <laughs> Ali Alajimi. <laughs> Stephanie Gubel. <laughs> and Rachel Sin. Rachel. Rachel. <laughs> oh, you're up there. Okay, well, maybe it might be difficult for you to come down here, but <laughs> all right. Brutvi. Now, they have been working for the better part of 12 months to put all of this together, so uh, they, they deserve all our um, thanks and, and gratitude. So thank you so much. Together with their colleagues across global events, sponsorship, um, it, it's really... Um, you know, the, the ISD team, it's, it's, been, it's been wonderful to see this flourish again and, uh, and uh, under the baton of, uh, of you, Elisabetta, particularly. Ah, <laughs> oh, there you are. Thank you. Now, I'm going to try something different. May, may, I, may I do it? Sure. Yes. Are we? Okay, good. So what I will try to do is move over here. 
Actually, you managed to do this before. I don't know if I can do it again. Let's make it work. Oh, it's working. Yeah. Ah, wonderful. So, first of all, uh, some words to congratulate, of course, the um, University of Auckland and the University of Trento for... for the wonderful performance and uh, uh, after competition and, and the ability. Is this better? Yes, thank you. And, and, and for, for reaching, for reaching, <laughs> for reaching, <laughs> I'm really sorry, uh, third and fourth position respect, uh, respectively. And of course, maybe I'll go back there. I'm really sorry. And of course, the moment we have all been waiting for, uh, the announcement of the, um, really sorry. <laughs> Leave it to an arbitration lawyer to, uh, to mess it up. Um, may I please uh, uh, have your attention for the announcement of this year's winning team. As you know, the finalists were Nalsar University of Law, India and New York uh, a, a Law School from, thank you, from the United States. And the winner of this year's ICC mediation competition. Oh, there's a drum roll. <laughs> is Nalzar University. <laughs> New York, please come to the stage.